If you're looking for a server that can grow with you, but you also don't want to be held to any kind of contract, then the Cloud Next platform may be the platform for you. Hi, my name's Tom, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the basics of the Cloud Next platform, how to get started, and I'll also show you some of the features that are available so that you can see if this is the right platform for you. So first things first, if you haven't got a Cloud Next panel set up already, you're going to want to purchase a Cloud Next server to get started. So to do that, first things first, you're going to want to go through to the product list. And from here, you're going to want to add servers and cloud to your panel. Now to do that, you can simply click this sorting field at the top. And right here, you'll see the option to open a Cloud Next account. Now to do that, you do need to purchase a Cloud Next server. You aren't charged for the panel itself. It comes free with the server that you purchase. So once you've clicked on that link, you'll get to this screen here and you will simply need to select the server that most fits your needs. Now, what server you actually need does depend on what you're planning to do with the server. The good thing about the Cloud Next platform is that even if you find that the server you select isn't necessarily what you need to start with, you can make those changes down the road quite easily. As I said at the start, this is a very flexible platform, so you don't need to worry about being stuck with the wrong decision or being stuck in a contract. For me, I'm just going to select a bog standard, one vCore, one gigabyte of RAM and some storage. So you come into this screen, you can select different operating systems. Each one will have different options if they are available. I'm going to select Ubuntu 20 just to keep things simple here. Uh, it does say, obviously, if the operating system that you want is not available straight away, there are legacy operating systems that can be installed from the Cloud Next control panel once it's active. If you can't see the one that you want here, it may be available in the control panel. And if you want to double check that, just get in contact with our support team. They'll be able to take a look for you and let you know. You can also select additional software to purchase here on the screen as well, such as Plesk. And as mentioned, you can select the data center that you want to provision the server in. I'm based in the UK, so the UK makes the most sense for me. But depending on where your users are based, the people who will be using the server the most, you may decide that another data center is better. Uh, in this case, though, I'll be selecting the UK. OK, and once you've done that, you just then go through this page, which just shows you what you're going to be paying for that server. You'll notice it sets out an initial monthly charge. Now, the thing to note with Cloud Next is that this is the maximum charge that you will receive on a monthly basis. The way that Cloud Next works is actually that you pay for the amount of time that your server is active. So when you set up the server for the first time, if you leave it running and you let it be active for that entire month, then you will incur the maximum charge, which is the amount given there. However, if you turn your server off for half the month, or if you delete your server halfway through the month, you'll only incur a charge for the amount of time that the server is active. You will just need to enter in relevant details necessary. So uh, bear with me a second whilst I do that. Then once you've done that, just select your payment method. Make sure you just agree to the terms. And if you want to be kept informed of uh, special offers, product updates, etc., select that there as well. And then you can just select confirm and pay now. And that will start to set up a cloud server for you and it'll set up your Cloud Next control panel. So our Cloud Next control panel is now up. So let's log in there and have a look. So here I've just gone into the Cloud Next control panel and you can see there that my server is currently in the process of setting up. Uh, it's assigned an IP address. I can see that the operating system is correct and the type is, is as it should be. Now, if you select the server, you can now, whether it's active or not, you'll be able to see more details regarding that server down below. So you can see your server access details will be there available, ready to use. Also including your Plesk access details so that you can log directly into Plesk on your server. Obviously, if you purchase Plesk, that's really important that you that you log in there to manage your server. Here, you can also see your IP address as well, which is very important. You can see the current configuration. So that's most of the important information that's on this page. You can see that the server is now active. That green dot means it's on. It means that actually, if I wanted to, I could log into that server. So why don't we give that a quick go? So I'm just going to use putty here. Uh, and I am just going to grab all the information that I need. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, and what we will do very quickly there is, so it's root. Yes, yeah, so it's reckon. And then if I just do show password, obviously this server won't exist at the end of this tutorial. So if I copy that in, there we go. I'm now logged in directly into my server. So super easy, super simple. Close that session. And what we will now do is go through all the different management steps that are available. So if you want to make any changes to your server, typically the place that you would be doing that is in the actions area. So once you have a server selected, you'll then be able to click on this actions drop down here and you'll have a list of actions that you can actually 
perform on the server. So most of these are self-explanatory. You do have some interesting ones like accessing the KVM console. Now it's rare that you'll ever need to do this, but if you are in a situation where you can't access your server by any other way, so you can't log in via SSH, uh, if you've got Plesk, you can't log in that way either, then what you could potentially do is access via the KVM console. What this basically does is give you a direct link through to your server so that you're accessing the server as if you were in front of it with a keyboard. And you'd normally use this if you're trying to troubleshoot an issue with your server. If you just weren't able to access the server at all, then this would be the way to go so that you can try and start to perform some actions to get your server back into an accessible state. Obviously, if you do need to access KVM, you get in and you're not sure what to do, you're running into issues, our support team are available 24 seven. So just get in touch with them, give them a call and they'll be able to take a look at your server for you. From there, we've also got the option to customize the server. You can select all these presets if you want to, which gives you just kind of like a, a core base to work with. But what you can also do is look in the flex servers area, for example. So if you know that you need more CPU cores, then what you can do is add in the amount that you need that meet the specification that you require. It also means that if you're in a situation where you know you just need a little bit more resource, but not necessarily a full upgrade, you can apply that to see if that helps. So here I can obviously apply more CPU cores. You will see the actual change to the monthly cost here as well. Now, the way that it works with Cloud Next is that when I apply this, it's not just going to charge me outright for the month here. Cloud Next is charged after usage. Uh, so it's charged at, on the second of the month and it will charge for the previous month's worth of activation time on that server. Now, you may be in a situation where you want to change the operating system that's on the server or potentially you want to apply a new application or a new ISO then you can do that in the reinstall image area. So when you select that, you can come, it will take you to this page and you can select a different operating system to use. If you're looking for an operating system that is legacy, that wasn't available on the initial purchase page, then you should be able to find those here. For example, for CentOS, we don't offer stream eight or nine by default, but if you need it, it is available here in the reinstall image area. We also offer some of the more lesser used OSs that are still important for some people, such as such as TrueNAS Core as an example and Photon OS. It's worth noting that when you reinstall an image that will completely wipe your hard drive on your server. So make sure that if you do this, you have a full backup of any data that you do want to keep because it will be lost upon reinstalling the server. Okay, so moving back over to the Action Center. Finally, we have a few other options here. So we have the clone option, which as it says, literally is cloning your server. It's making an exact copy of your server. You know, if, if that's something you need to do, whether you maybe you want to create a load balancer or solution or something like that, and that's an option that's available to you. There is also the ability to take snapshots within the Cloud Next control panel. This is really important when you're doing something new on your server that might potentially be putting your server at some kind of risk. Maybe you're installing a new program, for example, or you, know, you might be changing some of the access date details on your server, something like that. Creating a snapshot, as it sounds, you're basically just selecting a point in time to save the state of your server, you can then restore from said snapshot and it will restore the server back to that state. So the next thing to take a very quick look at is the network area. Now there's a lot of options here um, and depending on what you're doing with the server, some of these are going to be more important to you than others. Now, one option that is going to be important regardless of what you're doing with your server is the firewall policies. So here you can see any firewall policies that you have active on your server. Now, the, obviously, a firewall policy basically opens specific ports to allow applications to access in and out of the server. So by default, when you set up your server, a firewall policy will be applied that, that makes sense for the image that you're using for your server. For example, when I provisioned my server, I selected Linux and I selected Plesk. So I've been given a default firewall policy there that opens port 22 for SSH access, port 80 for general internet access, uh, but also it opens the ports relevant for Plesk as well, which means I won't run into any issues on first time setup. So the last thing I'll show you in today's video is actually how to create a new server. So all you need to do very easy is just click the create button and you'll get two options. You can either make a cloud server or a bare metal server. And the key difference between the cloud server and the bare metal server is that the cloud server is virtual. So it's flexible, it's customizable. Whereas a bare metal server is a dedicated server within the Cloud Next platform. So it, you can't customize it in the same way. You can still make some adjustments to storage space and stuff like that. It, it is a machine that's in a fixed state, but it still has the flexibility in terms of billing. So you can turn it off or, or remove it kind of at will as you need. In this case, because we've already got a cloud server, I will show you the process for a bare metal server. And it's at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty much the same process. So. Here you start to create a bare metal server. So you can just select a name. So I'm just going to put in test 
server two and then we can then start to look at all of the different presets we have some drop downs here to kind of filter out what the options are available in terms of presets so if you know the resources that you need if you know what specifications you require then you can filter down to see what servers we offer that meet those so uh, in this case again i'll just pick this one here just the uh, the e3 127032 now i've selected obviously i've selected that one and you can also see there's a drop down here next to storage this is what i was talking about where there is some slight flexibility uh, because here you can actually select a different storage type if you want to so what we'll do is then scroll down and again you can select uh, which operating system we have included in our images so just as it was with the cloud server you can select different different versions if you need to so in this case i'll just select ubuntu again you can add plesk if you want to again and as i mentioned you know if you're a first time server user if you're using your server for web hosting this is a very good option to use because because plesk is built really to be a web hosting control panel so if you're looking to host a lot of websites then plesk is a good idea to go with and of course again you can select your data center and also this time you can select your availability zone because it's a dedicated machine it is actually in a physical space in our data center in terms of the actual availability zones and what they mean it's just different allotments of availability what i would honestly do is just leave it on default because if it's selected by default then that's most likely where we have the most availability so it just makes sense to do that okay so we've taken you through some of the basics of the cloud next platform and i've also shown you some of the features that are available i haven't covered all of them and there are plenty of advanced features such as starting your own vpn using load balancers and using the cloud api to also automate features of the cloud next panel and these will be topics that we will cover in a later video just to give them their own space and their own room to breathe but for this video that should about do it so hopefully this has been helpful and of course if you do need any further assistance with your cloud and next product please don't hesitate to get in touch with our support team who are available 24 7. but that should about do it for today so thanks for tuning in i hope this has been helpful and i will see you in the next video